Hey, mixing React and HTMX, let's do this. This is actually from a little bit ago, almost a year ago. So this will be interesting to see. This was before server components happened. I'd love to hear the uh, like a like an update to this, but this is very exciting. A recent project required a complex HTML user interface with multiple interdependent elements. With the goal of using HMX, I implemented the initial prototype using custom elements, but it grew in complexity quite fast. In the end, I found this to be an occasion in which React provides a clean and elegant way to structure code and data flow. Not content with uh, not content with giving up on HMX for the rest of the application. I set out to combine both libraries. In this blog post, I'd like to walk you through the resulting setup. So there you go. Are you ready? We're going to be mixing a little of every world here, okay? Every world will be included in this world. Libraries will continue to be combined until morale improves, all right? The basic idea is to use a custom element that wraps the React root. In the spirit of hypermedia-driven applications, the goal is to let the regular DOM always reflect the application state and to let React render the shadow DOM of the current uh, of the custom element using a mutation observer the element updates the shadow DOM as the regular DOM changes either driven by HTMX or React. <laughs> it's funny that we we're just talking about simplicity versus complexity. This feels like we've just hit something that feels complex. Anyways, the running example for this post will be a simple React component that displays a message. React root React element type my app props equals this. All right. Here, the React root element is our wrapper, and the React element specifies the type and props of the root component. Oh, man, you got like a... Mm, that looks just encouragingly difficult. There is no such thing as simple React component, I know. This simple React component comes with 250,000 characters. Um, it is the equivalent of JSX, a my app, hello, yes, this would be the equivalent. To define React root element, we start with an autonomous custom element that extends the HTML element and then fills out the details step by step. Yep, okay, there we go. Uh, nothing nothing feels better than an anonymous class. I feel like you've hit peak JavaScript when you're throwing down anonymous classes. By the way, this is just how you do custom elements. They're just creating a web component here that the web component uses React. I mean... We, gotta, we all got to be pretty proud of this moment, okay? The constructor attaches the shadow DOM and sets up the observer uh, observer for any changes to the children or their attributes. There you go. We have a constructor, root equals null, attach shadow, mode open, mutation observer. I'm not even sure what a mutation observer is at this point, other than something that sounds like some sort of RxJS. Does this have RxJS as well? Or is this like knockout? What is this? What is going on here? How is this the third library we've spotted so far in this project? Uh, every time the children are updated, the render method is called, which updates the React root by re-rendering it with the current type and current props. Uh, is this uh, driven by a uh, use effect hook? I'm not even sure. Knockout? I don't know. That's vanilla JS. Classic. It really is. It actually vanilla JS. Mutation observer JavaScript. Is that? Oh, I, I think I spelled it with an N. I need to keep up with stuff. I didn't even know there was a mutation observer just just hanging out there. Well, I'm dumb. Look at that. Oh, I see what they're doing. Oh, that's cool. So they're using a mutation observer to observe when HTMX changes the DOM, is my assumptions here, and then react and then send in stuff to make React respond to it. Is that am I am I catching that correct? They are super modern. Po can we say postmodern? Uh all right. Root render. This dot root dot render create element, all of this stuff right here. Ooh, nothing like taking in an object and creating a copy of it inside of here. Oh, mm, love it. Um, all right. Note how the root element injects itself as the root prop. This way, the element can be accessed from within React, for example, to send events to the rest of the page or to update props. The current type and the current props are reflections of the corresponding properties of the first React element contained within our custom element. This can be accomplished with the getters. Okay. Beautiful, be beautiful. Do a little query selecting. Do a little JSON parse element attribute props. Love it. Love it. String to object to object to copy of object rendering. Beautiful. Simil similarly, the custom element also implements the corresponding setters, and those properties can easily be modified programmatically. In addition, the custom element also cleans up the React root once it's disconnected from the DOM. See the full source for details? Okay, we won't. But very, uh, very cool. New event. Bubbles true. Dispatch this event. Are they just just doing non JSX here? Right? Am I am I re reading this correctly? This is the 
this is the imperative version of the declarative JSX, right? This is what you compile down to, just a bunch of create elements. Yeah, yeah. And people would do anything but remove React. I know. There's few things you should never do in the world. You should never ask a woman if she's pregnant, okay? You just never make that mistake. When's that baby do? Right? Never do that, okay? Just the worst possible thing you can do. The second less known worst possible thing you can do is remove React. Everybody knows this. Uh, the display, let's see. <laughs> uh, the div displays the message that is set in the props. The button triggers the custom event. Now we can instantiate the app in HTML and connect it with HTMX. Okay, this is actually kind of, this is very interesting. Look at this. Oh, what? You have your server producing, man, this is, is this literally React server components before they were invented? Is that what we're looking at right now? React root ID root HTX uh, update trigger uh, my React event. Oh, that's that's pretty clever. Oh, I never even thought about doing that. I never thought about containing an element and the places where I do custom JavaScript, such as uh, this thing with with uh, this little fun thing I'm working on. I never once thought about the idea that I could actually emit custom events from here and have HTMX react to the custom events ah what this is actually a really clever idea i think this is awesome yeah no there's a lot of really good takeaways here i love making fun of react don't get me wrong i'll make fun of it but there's a lot of really good ideas here right there's a lot of really good ideas and you shouldn't shouldn't sleep on that all right button update target root okay update so you have a button on the outside that will replace the stuff here and then you also have something within here that will cause it to replace itself via the custom event. Very cool. This is very, very cool. This is super, actually, this is actually super cool. The updates via HMX can either be triggered from the outside React via the update button, which we just saw, or from inside React via the custom My React event. In both cases, HMX will replace the React element inside the React root with the server response. This, uh, the React root element then notices the change and triggers a re-render. Importantly, that's, that's what, so that's what the mutation observer is for. Importantly, React applies here its a diffing logic and updates the DOM only for modified parts of the tree. For example, the button in the component will never be updated. Okay. Another option uh, is to set props on the React root element itself from JavaScript. Again, this will change the attributes on React element and then trigger a re-render. My app component for the setup reads. Okay, my app, on click, do this thing, set the props right here, and then it does all this. And Oh, it's funny that he didn't use the little E's here. Right, and this must be from the mutation observer, right? Run this render function and observe it on this element and its subtree, its children list, its attributes, uh, and, and filter on props and type. Very cool. I did not know about mutation observer. What a super cool thing! What a super cool thing! I did not know about that. You can find the complete demo here, it showcases the different update uh, modalities and also in uh, multiple independent React routes. Use a sh uh, show source to look at the implementation. All as always, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Hey, thank you, CProm. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go over here. I'm going to follow this person right here. I'm going to give this guy a little follow. What a cool little thing that he built. That is super cool. There's a lot of really good ideas in here. I'm mean, Not the React part. But, I mean, everything else is really, really cool. It's actually a really good way to kind of look at because... There's something, because at some point with HTMX, if you're building something that, that just requires client-side interactivity that makes no sense to be server-driven, again, Conway's Game of Life, why would you ever have the server render each click, right? This is not a live-produced video game, okay? We're not doing RTMP. There is no point in having this thing being rendered out, right? And so this makes perfect sense to be purely client-side. And so I can really see a cool use case using something a little bit more clever here with start and enter and all that. There's a lot of cool tricks right here. I really like that. Yeah, what a good coding trick. Let's uh, our add our hundredth uh, or a thousandth React trick. Well, this one's not a React trick. It's just a way for me to look at and try to understand better how to create more rich games or more rich applications with HTMX without the need for React. Right? The first time uh, you have a chance at the top is the second uh, one you get a free pass. I'm not sure what that means, but I like that. Just trigger the state, saving when needed. Exactly. But it's cool. Uh, feels like you should just use web components using lit or something. Yeah, I have never looked into lit. It's something I really do want to look into because I feel like that's like a really useful item um, I want to play with. But I need something that works well with Go. 
so I'm going to play. I'm going to play with it. You know what I mean? I'm going to play. I'm going to play. We're going to find it out. Lit is lit. Okay. Anyways, the name is the primogen. 